Good evening, and I hope that everyone is having some victory in Jesus this week. I'm so excited to be here tonight. This is Deb, um, but I'm here introducing a new show. We have Overcoming Life's Obstacles, and uh, this is the debut show with Jerry McGee. You may all remember her. She was on the Healing River a few weeks ago speaking, and we have put together her own show So you'll be seeing more of her in the future, pretty much every other Tuesday starting tonight. And tonight's show is going to be on soul ties. So it's a great topic. If you're not familiar with what soul ties are, you can learn about them. If you are, you can come and learn some more. And we will have prayer at the end of the teaching. The first hour or so is going to be the teaching. Whenever that wraps up, we will take live phone calls if anyone wants to call in and get special prayer uh, in particular, you can do that. I'm going to give you the phone number now and we'll give it again at that time. It is 646-595-4784 and that will be the phone number to call in. Now you can call in anytime and listen to the show on the phone. But when you want to, if you want to speak with us to be screened for prayer, press 1, and that will put you into our green room, and Dorothy will take the call there and get you lined up for prayer, okay? So you do have that option tonight. We will have time for live prayer if you want it, and if not, we'll we'll be praying for everybody in general anyway. So um, that being said, I'll introduce Jerry McGee. She is uh, from Abiding Life Ministries. If you want to find her website, it is at uh, jerrymcgee.org, I think. Or, well, Jerry, do I have that right? That was jerrymcgee.com. Dot com. Mm-hmm. Okay. jerrymcgee.com. It's G-E-R-I-M-C-G-H-E-E.com. And that will take you directly to her website with her ministry for more information and anything that you might need, you want to contact her, support her, and, and all of that will be there. And and also, Dorothy is here tonight with us. She's helping out in the background with all of the technical aspects. That's more of her talent. And we do appreciate all the work she does. If anyone is wanting to help support Dorothy and what she's doing with the ministry, uh, you can contact her with her. Her email is dchurchy1 at hotmail.com. And you can contact her that way or find her on PayPal that way. But uh, we do appreciate everything Dorothy does, putting the shows together. There's a lot of technical aspects behind the scenes that take a lot of time, even after the show is done, to get it out to all the podcasters so that those of you listening in the archives can get it on your phones. And we have people listening on, I think, 11 different podcasters and venues now. So it's a lot of time distributing that. And uh, but it gets the word out all over all over the world. We know there are listeners in Asia and Europe and uh, many countries that have contacted us. So it's really uh, important that we can work with the different venues that uh, are more likely to be where you where you're at or the one that you might use with your particular phone. So anyway, um, I want to get started with this teaching because soul ties is a really great topic that a lot of people are not familiar with. And it's very helpful when you understand this and get those soul ties broken. It can really set you free and change your life. Sometimes that is one of the reasons blocking you from what you're seeking in life. So without further ado, I'll, I'll introduce Jerry back, um, my, one of my spiritual mothers, a wonderful lady. And Jerry, I will hand the mic over to you. Thank you so much. It's just a blessing to be on the program and to have uh, overcoming life's obstacles. Basically, the teachings have come out of God teaching me how to live an overcoming Christian life, and there's so many aspects of it, but soul ties is just one aspect, and I'll say a very big aspect of, of deliverance and healing. I've seen more people healed and delivered through breaking soul ties than any other subject I've ever taught on. Uh-huh. I don't mean to interrupt you. Can you just check your volume? I want to make sure that people will be able to hear this clearly. Okay. Let's see. Is that loud enough? 
I think that's better. Can you hear me now? That's as loud as it will go. Okay. All right. Just talk loudly. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> yep. Yep. That's good. Thanks. Okay. Great. Anyway, soul ties, I've seen more people healed through breaking soul ties than any other message I've ever taught. And through soul ties, you can get the demons of whoever you have a soul tie with. You can get their familiar spirit, their sicknesses, their diseases, their mental problems. Um, And so um, before I start, I want to pray. And I also want to thank Dorothy and thank Deborah for their help and for Dorothy uh, hosting this show. And I just appreciate that so much and appreciate you, Deborah. Anyway, so, Lord, we come before your throne in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, for every person who's listening in. I pray, God, for the truth that sets us all free. Father, I just ask in Jesus' name that tonight I be a tree of life, that rivers of living water come forth from my innermost being. I pray, Lord, that um, you'll move powerfully and mightily. I ask that your Holy Spirit will come upon each of us, Father, with your mighty power that signs and wonders will be accomplished through the teaching of your word. Father, I just pray in Jesus' name that as I teach, that you will download me from with from a, from on high with a word from heaven. Father, I just thank you that we have authority over all of Satan's power. And Lord, I thank you that we take we take our seat in the heavenly places. We take the authority that you've given us to bind and loose, and we bind you, Satan, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in heavenly places from every person that is listening in, from Deborah, from Dorothy, from this program, from our families, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we bind and break every word, curse, fail, hex, vex, charm, incantation, divination, assault, assignment, attachment, voodoo magic, black magic, sorcery, witchcraft, words of death, words of iniquity, Curses, assignments, satanic rituals spoken over this program, spoken over our lives, the lives of those who are listening in. And, Lord, we ask you to cover us with the blood of Jesus. We pray for your ministering angel to minister to each person, Father, in Jesus' name. And as we uh, go through this, Lord, I ask you to show each person who the people they have soul ties with in Jesus' name. Um, Nehemiah, in Nehemiah 1.8, Nehemiah said, remember the word which... You commanded your servant Moses, he said this to the children of Israel, um, saying that if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. Um, Scatter means to distribute loosely. It means like you would scatter seeds, um, to distribute at irregular intervals. It means to um, disperse in different directions. It means to scatter like you would scatter seeds. In Deuteronomy 28, uh, God says, because of disobedience to the voice of my commandments and my statutes, that all of these curses will come upon you. Uh, and in, in one of the curses, it says that, be, that, that um, the enemy will come against you one way and you'll flee seven ways. That's the curse. And the blessing is the enemy comes against you one way and he flees seven ways. So there's blessings and curses. The blessings are carried out by holy angels, and the curses are carried out by demon spirits. And Jesus said, you're either gathering with me or you're scattering. And so what we want to do tonight is to be gathering people from all the places where they've been scattered. Um, A soul tie, an evil soul tie, is an unholy alliance or a perverted relationship. Um... It is an unholy relationship between two or more people. It is a joining or knitting together of the bonds of a relationship. Through soul ties, you get a part of whoever you have a soul tie with, and they get a part of you. Through soul ties, you get the demons, the familiar spirits, the mental problems, the emotional problems, the sexual problems, the spiritual problems, the addiction problems of whoever you have a soul tie with. Soul ties occur when like-minded beliefs Godly soul ties. You know, there's a difference. This is uh, there's a difference between godly soul ties and ungodly soul ties. Tonight we're really going to be talking about ungodly soul ties. But godly soul ties occur when like-minded believers are together in the Lord, friends, uh, marriage partners, pastors to 
congregation uh, children to their parents. Uh, godly soul ties are based upon agape love. It's called the royal lo- law. Um, in Galatians 6, 2, it says also... Um, called the royal law and God uh, God approves of these kind of soul ties they represent the bonding of persons through the bonds of agape love in Colossians it says Colossians uh, 2 2 says that their hearts may be encouraged having been knit together in love and attaining to the all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself. Ungodly soul ties occur between people when there's a lack of God-centeredness and where there's compromise to any of God's commandments. Wherever I violate the word of God with another person, I have a soul tie. It involves the joining of a person's mind, their will, their emotions, and their human spirit. And we're not talking about joining of the Holy Spirit because each person is born with a human spirit. It's born in their bo- into their bodies. It, it involves the joining of ideas and views as well as emotions in the feeling realm. Uh, a soul tie can range from being uh, laid back to quite in powerful, uh, overpowering, depending on the depth of sin committed with another person. Um, soul ties can be joined like a, like a string, like a thread, like a rope, like a cable, uh, like a chain depending on the depth of sin, and each progressively gets stronger than the other. Demonic soul ties are perversions of the good and holy. A soul tie can be like a yoke around our neck and can enslave us to other people. That's why sometimes you're, you maybe you're in a relationship where you can't break free or you have a child that is in an ungodly relationship with someone and maybe they try to break up and the next thing you know that they're reeled back into the relationship. And that's because of a demonic soul tie. You know, you cannot see a soul tie with the human eye. It's it's something done in the spirit. You know, if you, if, if you had eyes like, uh, like holy angels or like demons or could see into the spirit realm, you would see people linked to each other. You could see, each person linked to thousands of people that we have soul ties with. Soul ties affect us either in a positive way or in a negative way. First, uh, First Corinthians um, says, when one member suffers, we all suffer. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. So a soul tie can affect you negatively or positive. You know, Scripture says, walk with wise men and be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. And through a soul tie, if I if I have a healthy soul tie with someone and I walk with a wise person, I I um, I have their good uh, qualities and characters characteristics of the person that I have a soul tie with. Um, godly soul ties are founded upon love, and demonic soul ties are founded upon lust. Jonathan David, you know, uh, people would like to say Jonathan and David had a homosexual relationship, but Jonathan and David had a good soul tie because they walked in covenant with the Lord. In 1 Samuel 18, verse 1, it says, Now it came about when he had finished speaking to Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knitted to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved David as himself. Now, ungodly soul ties, I'm just going to give you some things that open you up to ungodly soul ties. Through fornication, and fornication is to have sex outside of marriage, not being married, but just to have, sleep around. And, you know, it's amazing. There's probably 60% of people today think nothing of shacking up. And the, and the Bible condemns sexual sin, uh, which is idolatry, more than any, any other sin in the Bible. But through fornication, I was teaching a meeting in Austin, Texas, and or in the Austin area, and a girl asked for prayer, and she had warts on her face. And I said, do you have a boyfriend? And she said, yes. And I said, have you been sexually promiscuous with him? And she said, yes. I said, does he have warts? And she said, yes. Deborah, can you, can you hear me good enough? 
anyway, I hope y'all can hear me. Um, and then um, I was in Michigan teaching um, at a church in Michigan, and a lady came up and she asked me uh, if I would pray for her. She said that uh, she had recently had sex, uh, had um, uh, surgery on some part of her private parts. I don't know if it was her. I don't know if she had a hysterectomy or what she had, but it had to do with her female issues. And um, she said, I've been in constant pain ever since. And I said, have you ever been into sexual sin? And she said, yes. And so I let her in repentance. And when she got through, I, I just, well, what I told her, I said, through sexual sin, you still have the people up that you had sex with up inside of you. And so when she broke the soul ties and she repented, um, she was healed. Another way that soul ties come in is through being abused sexually, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, a man came to me for prayer, and he was a carpenter, and he said his arms hurt him constantly. And, and then he said, my brothers used to hurt my arms. And so um, I, when I let him to forgive them and broke soul ties, his arms were healed. You see, if somebody hurts you in any part that they hurt you, and you uh, don't forgive them by sundown, you let the sun go down on your anger, then um, because you let the sun go down on your anger, the scripture says, uh, don't let the sun go down on your anger because you give a foothold to the enemy. So if somebody hurts me, say somebody hits me in the stomach and um, I don't forgive them by sundown, 50 years later, I may be looking for a, a route to a, uh, I may be looking for a medical reason to why my stomach hurts. And it's like through a soul tie, their fist is still in your stomach. And so wherever you're hurt, uh, if you have a soul tie through someone hurting you, um, then um, you, can be, you can be healed when you forgive them. The other day I was with somebody, and they said that they had hurt their back recently. And so I asked them, um, as I've been getting the question, you know, I said, well, have you ever backslid? Because that's a big reason why. Uh, people have back problems. Have you ever, um, were you ever beat? She said, I was beat terribly. And she named the person that had beat her when she was a little bitty girl. And she, and so when she forgave him and broke soul ties, her, her back was healed. And so, um, so if you've got pain in your body, the scripture says in Ecclesiastes, so remove vexation, which is grief and anger and sorrow from your heart, and you can put pain out of, out of your body. And so uh, vexation means grief, anger, wrath, provocation, hurt, and idolatry. And, of course, the vexation comes in because all of that's idolatry because in my pain I don't turn to God. I turn to a false god. I turn to a vow. I turn to something else instead of God. So that's why vexation also is idolatry. Um, I was at another meeting, and I uh, had a, a man that it was a pastor, and he said that his um, his hands had arthritis in them. And, of course, hands have to do with ministry. And so I had a vision that he, as a pastor, had his hands around each of their neck choking the congregation because sometimes as a pastor you can really be irritated at the people you pastor. And so anyway, his hands were healed of the arthritis. Another lady that um, came to me for prayer at a meeting, she said she had Parkinson's disease. And her hands were shaking. And I said, well, does anybody else in your family have uh, have this problem? And she said, um, she said, well, my – anyway, she said her sister. And I asked her what she felt about her sister. And she said her sister – she said, oh, she's hurt me so terribly. When I let her to forgive, she was healed. And um, she instantly quit, quit shaking. Uh, you see, it says in Matthew 18 that if you – don't forgive, you're turned over to the tormentors. And the tormentors in the Greek means demons that inflict pain. It means the pain of disease. And so because of unforgiveness, see, the unforgiveness bonds you to whoever you have a soul tie. It, it sets you up for an ungodly soul tie. Um, also, there was a lady that called me that was a minister in um, Oklahoma, and I didn't know this lady, but she said, I'm getting ready to have to have hip surgery. Do you have any insights? And I say, well, when you were growing up, did you have to carry your brothers and sisters on the hip? And she said, how did you know? And I said, well, that's 
the Holy Spirit just told me that. You see, as a child, it, we're not meant to be the caretaker of brothers and sisters, and sometimes children are put under heavy bondage by their parents, making an older child take care of the little ones, or maybe while they work, or maybe they're incompetent, or maybe they're sick or can't work. And, you know, children are, are, are not made to be able to be uh, parents or have to be the mama or have to be the daddy when they're little bitty children, and they miss their childhood, and there's bitterness there. And so through a soul tie, when I said to her, did you ever have to carry your brothers and sisters on the hip? She said, um, uh, yes, she did, because her mother was mentally ill or something. And so I said, now you're a pastor, and you're having to carry them on your carry your whole congregation on the hip. You see, however a child's trained up is the way it goes. And because the Bible says uh, parents train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Well, see, she was trained up to carry people on her hip in the spirit realm. So in the spirit realm, her brothers and sisters were still on her hip. And so she said to me, you don't have to pray for me. I'm already healed. You see, the truth set her free. And so wherever I'm bitter, it bonds me to whoever I'm bitter at or who, who, whoever I'm angry at, whoever I'm holding unforgiveness toward. You know, little children are not meant to have to be the mom or the daddy, the caretaker. And so many times that's the position kids are put in. Maybe the parent, maybe the parent couldn't help it. But still, a child is cheated out of their, their childhood. They're, they're meant to grow up being protected, watched over, nurtured themselves and not have to be the one that caretakes everyone else. Another um, thing that opens us up to a soul tie is homosexuality. There was a man that had um, did many, many seminars for me, and he'd come out of a homosexual lifestyle. He knew the principles of deliverance, and he, he and his wife um, emailed me and said, um, do you have any insights? He said, I have an excruciating pain in my rectum. He said, do you have any insights? And the Holy Spirit just clicked into my heart. I said, yes, repent of everyone you've had anal sex with, especially someone that has hurt you back there. And within 15 minutes, he emailed me back, and he said, the minute that he broke soul ties and repented over a certain relationship he'd had, that the pain left him. You know, my son, uh, my youngest son died in 1989 with, with AIDS, and he had lived a homosexual lifestyle. And so through each relationship that he had that had AIDS, he had, he had the AIDS of whoever he had sex with. And so there were so many relationships um, for him to break before, before he could be healed. And, of course, this particular son was... Um, he was he always would take the easy way out even when he was well. So there were just too many relationships. He said to me once, Mom, uh, I had sex with so many people that if I met them on the street, I wouldn't recognize them. So every relationship, for a person to be healed, they have to break soul ties with all the relationships they've had. And, you know, healing is like peeling an onion. When I deal with one layer of the onion, I might feel relief for a day or two, a, a week, and then if something comes back, it doesn't mean I didn't get delivered of the first layer. It just meant there's another layer, and I keep on dealing with the layers until healing comes. Another way soul ties are formed is to incest and rape. You know, people that are molested and raped, it sets them up with the same same spirit of molestation, the same uh, spirit of rape that they were um, abused with, and until they're delivered, it sets them up to just pass this thing down to someone else through um, through having that spirit that they're opened up with. You know, little children that um, may never, I know one particular uh, situation where a child was never, uh, never would never do anything, uh, act out anything sexually. But after she was molested, she would act out sexually because that was transferred to her through the person that had molested her. Another thing is through bestiality. You know, how many times have you known someone that looks like they're animals? And I'm not saying that if they look like they're animals, they're in the bestiality. I'm not saying that. But but if they are, for, for sure. But many people look like they're 
you see people that look like they're animals, and that doesn't necessarily have to do with bestiality. But bestiality is letting an animal touch you in a, in a place or in a way that's not appropriate, or you touching an animal in a way that's not appropriate. And, uh, you know, I run a kennel, and so I hope I don't look like my dogs. <laughs> but I'm saying you have seen people that do look like their dogs, and, of course, that's to a soul tie. And then through pornography, uh, you know, the Satanists make the pornography. And Jesus said if you just look with lust on some, with someone in your heart, you've committed adultery. So the, the, the Satanists make the pornography, and they put curses on it. There's sexual hooks on it. And if you don't deal with it, I mean, it's almost like they, it's like you try to break away from pornography, and it's like something reels you back. It's a hard thing to break, but praise God, it can be broken. And so, um, so when you look at pornography, you're you're committing adultery. You have, uh, you know, people that look at look uh, at pornography, they can also have homosexual spirits because. When you're looking at orgies, you see bestiality, you see pedophilia, which is sex with children, you see um, homosexuality, you see orgies, and so you have all of those spirits whenever you're looking at pornography. And, you know, the Bible says we're not to set our eyes on evil. Another way we can have soul ties is through perverted family ties, and, you know, within a family uh, where where there's close relationship, there's soul ties, good soul ties which the enemy wants to pervert. And so the soul tie between a child and a parent is healthy, except when it continues, the control continues uh, in their adult years. Uh, God doesn't want anybody to control us except the Holy Spirit. Another thing is soul ties with the dead, touching the bones of the dead, the graves of the dead. Um, you know, even even going and sleeping in a hospital bed where somebody died, you can have a soul tie with the person that died. Or say you sleep in a bed with uh, there, where there's been a cancer patient, you can have a you can be opened up to that spirit of cancer. Um, a girl that used to travel with me who has long been uh, in heaven with Jesus, she was a nurse for 30 years in a hospital in Tyler, Texas, and. She said that when a person dies in a hospital, all they do is change the sheet. And, of course, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, it says if, if a person dies in a room, it, it, it's uh, unclean for so many days, and it, then it has to go through ceremonial cleansing. And this is the same by even going into a hospital room and sleeping on a bed that where there's been prostitution. When I go into a hotel, I anoint the room with oil, and I, I anoint the bed with oil, and I run out all the demons of the previous occupants and I can sleep in peace. You know, I learned this years ago when my husband and I were traveling and we stayed in a motel in some little town. I don't know where it was, but I had perverted dreams all night long and I don't have perverted dreams, but I had perverted dreams. And when I woke up, I said, Lord, why did I have these perverted dreams? And the Lord showed me that they had been pornography and prostitution that had gone on in that room. And since then, I always, when I go into a hotel room, I always anoint it with oil and pray over it and ask God to fill the room with his holy angels and for his Shekinah glory to fill the room. It says um, they were not to touch the bones of the dead, the, the touch the dead, and I've seen, uh, I've seen people kiss the dead. You know, demons won't live in a... Uh, a dead body they want to go into a live body and so what they do is the demons will go into uh usually the family member that's closest to them but you can get the demons just by kissing the dead or touching the dead or walking on the graves of the dead you know when i go into a mortuary i always break soul ties with every dead that's ever been in there or if you've walked on graves sometimes when you go to a funeral you have to walk on the dead on the dead on the graves of the dead and so we're not to touch those things. It opens us up to defilement. I remember years ago, a nurse, a lady who who had been a military nurse, she asked me to pray for her, um, uh, pray for her toes, um, and I I had no insight. But anyway, when we began to ask the Lord to show her why her toes had pain, she said, "When and as, as an army nurse, one of my jobs was to tag the toes of the dead." 
and she was her toes were healed whenever she broke soul ties. You know, this all sounds so weird, but I can tell you, through many years of being in deliverance, 35 years, I've seen over and over and over miracles when people uh, broke soul ties because uh, one of the ways where God says, I'm going to scatter you all over the earth, and the curse that we read about in in uh, Nehemiah 1.8, where God said, he told Moses that if you're unfaithful, I'm going to scatter you among the nations of the earth. That's how we're scattered is through soul ties because through a soul tie, people get a piece of us and we get a piece of them. And so we get to, we receive the image of the one uh, we have. And, you know, Bible says that everything works together for good to those that uh, – for. I'm sorry, everything works together for good to those who are called – by the Lord, for whom he foreknew, he predestined become conformed into the image of his son. So the only image we're to have is the image of Christ. We're to be changed from glory to glory into the image of Christ, not into the image of someone else. You know, if somebody controls you, they're conforming you into their image. And, and God wants to conform you into his image. You know, recently I lost a, a friend of 35 years, um, my best friend for 35 years, and she had been in bondage to a husband. And uh, and I believe that we're su- we're to submit as unto the Lord. But her daughter said to her, "Mother, you've let Dad totally redefine who you are. You see, God doesn't want anyone to redefine who you are. He wants you to be conformed into the image of Christ. And through fear, through idolatry, we make we make people idols. And God says, no idolater will enter the kingdom of heaven." I'm not saying this lady didn't love the Lord with her whole heart, and I know she's in heaven, but because of the idolatry of this man and because she'd been taught doctrines that wives submit even if they're submitting to demons. God doesn't want you to submit to demons. He wants you to submit as unto the Lord. That is, submit to the Lordship of Jesus in someone else. And God certainly wants us to to submit to authority. But he doesn't want us to submit to the wrong authority. And if I'm submitting to demons, I'm not submitting to God in authority. I'm I'm submitting to demons in authority, and that's a sin against God. And it took me lots of years to see through all of that. Anyway, so you can have soul ties with the dead. Um, and so if you've, if you've touched all these things, you just need to ask God to forgive you and ask God to cleanse you. And we're going to go through this at the end and this some deliverance, but it says in Second Corinthians six one, come up from amount among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will welcome you. Now that word unclean in the Greek means uh, anything that was considered unclean in the Old Testament. That's what that word means. And so in the Old Testament, touching the dead, the bones of the dead, the graves of the dead. Um, would open you up to unclean spirit. Uh, grief uh, can open us up to soul ties. You know, sometimes we want to hold on to the people that we uh, that we love. Say if someone dies. I was at a meeting in Dallas, and the, this lady that hosted the meeting, she said, "Pray for my my son and my daughter." Said he's got a lung problem. She's got a stomach problem, and I had no insight. And then she said, "And pray for our animals. They're always dying." And, and of course, then the Holy Spirit shows me that showed me that the children were in grief because they had been attached to the cat, some cats. And so I led this boy that had the lung problem. I led him to repent of hanging on to the cat. You know, for example, sometimes if something dies in the, in in our spirits, we'll say, "I'll never let go of you. I'll hold on to you forever." Well, in the spirit realm, that's exactly what they did. So I led the little boy in repentance. And his his lungs were instantly healed, and he turned whatever left him was so big. He turned to his little sister and he said, uh, and he named her name. He said that other cat that died had a stomach problem, and the little boy and the little girl were healed that day. Another uh, another lady, a girl, I say she was about sixteen years old, was at one of my meetings, and she had she came up to me for prayer, and her ankle was bandaged and I asked her she had wanted prayer for something else but I asked her I said what's wrong with your ankle and she said uh, oh she said I, I jumped down the stairs when I was about four or five years old and my mother told me not to 
And so then I led her to repent, and it was better. And then she started crying. She said, when when I was a certain age, <laughs> she said, my uh, my mother, my daddy died, my, and we had a farm. And my mother married this man who was financially in debt. And she said, and I had a horse named Teak. And she said, and she's just sobbing by this time. And I had to get r- rid of him. And I said, he didn't by any chance have a uh, ankle problem, did he? And and it was exact same side that her ankle was, uh, um, that she had her ankle problem. And uh, her ankle was healed when when I led her to forgive her mother and her stepfather. Broke so ties with the horse, and her ankle was healed. And about, oh, I guess about a year later, I saw her mother in a meeting, and I said, does your daughter still have an ankle problem? She said, oh, no. She's never had the problem since. And so she had been bonded to that horse through a soul tie. Another man at another meeting that I was at, he had had a back problem for 20 years. And as I began to pray for him, he said that he was in a car wreck when he was like 18 with his friend. And he was, they were both drunk and the friend, they were both in the hospital. The friend was in intensive care. He got out of the hospital, but then he went back to see the friend. And he he was so regretful because that wreck was his fault. His friend was in a coma, and he said, um, anyway, he would stand over this friend, and he would say, I wish I could be in your place. I'm sorry. You know, I would be in your place. I'd take your place. And he said, he kept saying to me, I feel like something's grabbing me in the back. And I've been told that people in a coma, even though they can't talk, they can hear you. And so... Um, I kept feeling like that that there was some, that the friend had his hand in his back, but yet I thought that's so crazy that couldn't possibly be true. And finally, this man said, "I feel like something's grabbing me in the back." And so, anyway, um, what had happened is the friend couldn't talk, but the friend's spirit man was reaching out to him and grabbing him, and it, like saying. He would stand over the friend and apologize, but when he would start to leave, it would be like the friend would be saying, no, don't go. And his spirit man was reaching out and grabbing him in the back. And that was probably one of the most bizarre things that I've ever been involved in or ever encountered. But I can tell you that man's back was healed after 20 years when he broke a soul tie with the friend that he had killed. And the friend later died after the coma. He he later died. Um, Another... Uh, reason for soul ties is that we make a vow that we're never going to be like someone and I had a lady at my seminar she had something wrong with her foot and I said um, is anyone else, anyone else in your family have anything wrong with their foot she said no but she said but my mother-in-law does I said well how do you feel about your mother-in-law and she said oh I love my mother-in-law I said did you ever want to be like her and she said oh yes I want to be just like her and I said well you are and so uh, you know, if we vow that we're not, we're never going to be like our mother and daddy or our mother. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I look just like I think I'm looking right at my mother. I'm sure that you've experienced that too. Another is inordinate affection for animals. Um, another is that you become like your teacher. Luke six fourteen says, after a man is fully trained, he becomes like his teacher. So if you're sitting under a pastor that's a whoremonger and doesn't love Jesus with his whole heart, you can get his spirit. And so uh, make sure that wherever you go to church that your pastor loves Jesus with his whole heart, that he's totally submitted to God. And and I'm not talking about being perfect because nobody's perfect. But, you know, I'm talking about somebody that, that has given God their whole heart and that they walk in repentance. And that's the only kind of teacher you should sit under is someone that is fully repentant and, of course, we're all a work in progress, all of us. And so make sure that whoever you're sitting under is loving the Lord, is walking in holiness. You know, we can be walking in holiness and God will show us something else and then we repent of what he shows us and then we continue to walk in the Spirit. You know, Job, it says he was the most righteous man that lived upon the earth. He wasn't perfect, but he was righteous because he feared God and turned away from evil. When he saw sin, he turned from it. And that's what God wants us to do. Another thing is laying hands on someone through impartation. You can impart demons to people. You can impart good things, bad things. 
I had a man at one of my meetings, his arm kept flying up, and I said, um, what's wrong with it? He came for prayer for something else, and I said, "Why? what's wrong with your arm? He said, oh, that's happened ever since the sister laid hands on me in a revival. And I said, well, brother, that's not the Holy Spirit. That's an unholy spirit. And I let, her, let him to break soul ties with her, and the arm quit flying up. You know, some of these meetings where you can go to, there's things going on that are not even scriptural. And if you don't know the word of God, you're going to be taken in by every wind of doctrine. The scripture says that there's going to be signs and wonders so even the elect can be deceived. And it says if you don't love the truth, God will send to you a strong delusion so that you cannot be saved. So if you don't love the truth, ask God to give you a love of the truth. If you have a love of the truth, you're not going to be deceived. If you have a love of the truth, you're going to change your doctrine to line up with the word of God. It says in 1 Timothy 5.22, don't lay hands on anyone too, too suddenly lest you partake of their sin. So sometimes even as ministers, we lay hands on people too quickly. And I always break soul ties with people I pray with or who's touched me because, you know, I, I try to be very discerning about who I lay hands on. but um, you know, sometimes we might miss it. So that's just something that I do. And if you're pray for people, that's something you should do. Another thing is <clears throat> joining yourself with a harlot <clears throat> or a prostitute. Or, or let me just say this. If we pray a prayer to, to receive Jesus as our Savior <clears throat> and our heart goes after another lover committed spiritual adultery against our bridegroom Jesus, so there's there's a physical harlot, a prostitute, but there's also a spiritual harlot, and that's a believer who has prostituted himself with a false god against his bridegroom Jesus. It says in First Corinthians six fifteen, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take away the members of Christ, and shall you then take away the members of Christ and make them? Members of a prostitute, may it never be. Or do you not know that the one who joins himself to a prostitute or a harlot is one body with her? For he says the two shall become one flesh. He who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. Now you can be, Jesus can be Lord of your life. He can be your be your master. And because you have a soul tie with, with some other issue or some other uh, person, uh, in that particular area, you've joined yourself to a harlot, and that has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. It says, flee immorality, sexual immorality. For every other sin that a man commits, he commits against outside the body, but a man who commits sexual sin sins against his own body. Or do you know that not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who we have from God, that you are not your own, or you've been bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. Another thing that we can have a soul tie with is joining ourselves with unbelievers. In Second Corinthians six fourteen, it says, Do not be bound together with an unbeliever, for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness, or what harmony is Christ with Belial, or what 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 uh, has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has a temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of God. For God has said, I will dwell among them and walk among them, and I'll be their God, and they shall be my people. But come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean. And I will come to welcome you and be a father to you, and, sh- and you shall be my sons and daughters says the Lord Almighty. Um, I had a lady call me, and she said, the devil is just doing a number on me. She said, I'm so sick. I've got all these physical problems, and my boyfriend's an atheist. And I and I emailed her back, and I said, God is giving you a whipping, not the devil, because God forbids that you join yourself with an unbeliever. And I said, if you're having sexual sin with this person, you need to break soul ties. And she emailed me back, and she said that she repented. She said it was the hardest thing she ever did to break up with this man. But she said when she repented, broke up with him, her body was healed. 
You see, she was sinning against God by joining herself with an unbeliever. Making idols out of friends, out of your children, out of your parents, out of your mates. The scripture says you become like your idols. In Psalms 115 and Psalms 135, it says those who make idols become like them. Uh, They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they can't hear. They have feet, but they can't walk. And I'm paraphrasing all of that. But you become like your idols. The next thing is evil companions. Proverbs 13 says, He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Another thing is making pledges or compromising with the word. The Bible says that a double-minded man receives nothing from God. Uh, through wounding another person's conscience. It, it says in 1 Corinthians 8, 9, but, but take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone sees you have, been, have knowledge dining at an idol's temple, will not his conscience, if it is weak, be strengthened to eat things to sacrifice to idols? For through your knowledge, you who, you who is weak, has I'm sorry for for your knowledge he who is weak oh goodness I'm having a hard time with this um, is ruined oh uh, okay okay for he who is weak is ruined for whose sake Christ died it all and so by sitting against the brethren. And wounding their conscience, if it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food causes my brother to stumble, I'll never eat meat again, so that I may not cause my brother to stumble. And so it's like, um, say I put a muddy hand on a, on a mirror. That mirror has received my imprint. And so when I wound someone's conscience, it's like I, I put an imprint on them of whatever I wound them with. Another was through associations where there's compromise. Uh, Joshua 23 says, In order that you may not associate with those na- these nations for which I have commanded concerning you, not to even mention their gods or swear by their name or bow down to their gods. If you ever go back and cling to the rest of these nations so as to um, remain, that remain among you and intermarry with them so that you associate with them and I with you and they with you. Know for certainty that the Lord your God will not continue to drive out the nations from before you, but they'll be a snare and a trap to you, and they will be whipped to your sides and thorns to your eyes until you perish from off this good land that the Lord your God has given you. In First Kings 11, 2, it says... Uh, For these nations concerning uh, which the Lord had said that the sons of Israel shall not associate with them, neither shall they associate with you, for for they will surely turn your heart after their God. So Solomon held fast to those in love. And so Solomon was destroyed, (coughs) excuse me, through the soul ties with the idolatrous women that he was involved with. And God had commanded him not to associate with them. And their gods led him astray and led to his destruction. Uh, don't, you're not to hang with a double-minded person. The Proverbs uh, 24, 2, 24, 21 says, um, it says, My son, fear, fear the Lord and the king. Do not associate with those given to change. Hanging with... It's actually immoral people. First Corinthians five nine, Paul said, "I wrote you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, but actually I wrote to you not to associate with any so-called brother if he's a sexually immoral person, or a covetous, or an idolater, or a reviler, or a drug, a drunkard, or a swimmer. Don't even eat a meal with such a one." So we're not to even eat a meal with a person that claims to be a believer if they're into those things. And that opens us up to soul ties. Uh, associating with a gossip in Proverbs 20, verse 19, he who goes about as a 
as a slanderer reveals secrets, do not associate with a gospel with a gossip. Another thing is con, is um, control of others. Um, Paul rebuked the Pharisees in Acts fifteen ten. He says, "Now therefore, why do you put God to a test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither their fathers nor you have been able to bear?" And so, when somebody <clears throat> yokes me up. I get conformed into their image. The only yoke we're supposed to wear is the yoke of Jesus, which is light and easy. And the Bible says we find rest for our soul. You can have soul ties with doctors through taking illegal drugs, through taking legal drugs, um, doctors to patients, patients to doctors, um, through, you know, the number three and four killers of people in the United States is, is uh, medical mistakes and prescription drugs. If you're taking prescription drugs, you need to you need to go on the internet and read the side effects of these drugs because every drug becomes another disease. The side effects of every drug becomes another disease. <clears throat> and it says in Galatians 5:19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these: adultery and that's that sex while you're married to someone else <clears throat> that, that you're not married to, fornication, that's to have sex outside of marriage. Uncleanness means to be impure and unholy. Lasciviousness means to be wanton, lust, to be preoccupied with sex, uh, that it manifests in lewd, lustful behavior. Idolatry is to love anything <clears throat> more than you love Jesus. Witchcraft, and that word in the, in the Greek is pharmakia, uh, magic or sorcery. Uh, hatred is the opposite of love. Love is patient and kind. Hatred is un- impatient and unkind. Variance means to be a quarreler. Emulation. Wrath, which is anger, seditions. Heresies is to hold to false doctrines. Envying, and that has to do with um, envying somebody. Murderer. That you know, Jesus said you can hate if you if you're just angry with your brother, you've murdered him in the spirit. Drunkenness, there's physical drunkenness, there's spiritual drunkenness. Nowadays, there's there's revivals going on that they call them re- revivals of the Holy Spirit, but they're really revivals of the unholy spirit. Um, the Bible tells us not to be drunk, not to be drunk in the spirit, we're to be sober. In fact, I've written a book called uh, Drunkenness: Is It a Blessing or Curse? And you can order that on online by going to jerrymcgee.com um, but it's a little book where I've researched and really actually it's I cover every scripture on the Bible in the Bible that has to do, do with drunk drunkenness uh, sober alert and there's not one place in the word of God that says we're to be drunk in the spirit in fact it's a curse instead of a blessing years ago I did a teaching on called harlotry wine and new wine take away the understanding And basically, there's a table of the Lord and a table of demons. There's a good wine and a bad wine. There's a good bread, which is the bread of life, and there's a bad bread. And in that research of of looking up all the scriptures on on a new wine, uh, I discovered that God mixes a wine, cup of the wine of his wrath, wrath that he makes the harlot drink that makes her drunk. And so when you see drunkenness in any denomination, it doesn't have to be at a... a, um, doesn't have to be at a, 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 a so-called revival. Uh, it's because of committing spiritual adultery against your bridegroom, Jesus. So God tells us to be sober for the purpose of prayer. It goes on to say, be sober, be alert, for your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, which means bring down, gulp down, and swallow up. goes on to say envyings, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and things like these, of which I tell you, as I've told you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And, of course, it's not talking about a one-time sin. It's talking about a habit, a custom, and a lifestyle. <clears throat> Another thing is body piercing or tattoos. You know, tattoos, the Bible forbids tattoos and body piercing. In Leviticus 19:28, it says, you sh- "In the new new, uh, new living says, you shall not make any cuts on your body for the for the dead, nor make any tattoo marks on yourselves. Oh, I am the Lord." 
uh, Exodus 21, verse 6 says, and it talks about, uh, it says, their master will bring them into uh, bring him to God and will bring him to the door and the master shall pierce his ear and it sh- and he will serve him um, permanently. So um, whoever whoever tattoos your body, whoever pierces your body, you ha- it's, a, it's a form of control and you have a soul tie with them. In fact, uh, tattoos uh, open up portals for demons to go in and out. Now you can get prayer for the tattoo you can get prayer for the tattoo um, and you can't get rid of the tattoo unless you go and play pay a lot of money to get the tattoo off but you can get the demons the spirits behind those tattoos i know a man that was covered with tattoos and when he went through deliverance he felt the demons leaving all of those tattoos still tattooed all over but as he repented um he got deliverance also, you can have uh, soul ties through satanic ritual, through witchcraft, through voodoo. Through voodoo, um, there was a girl I was ministering to, and I administered to her every day. And I took her home from a seminar with me, and a demon manifested through her. And of course, I was so new at this that I thought it was her. And she kept saying, "Why are you calling me something else? My name is Michelle." And I realized her name wasn't Michelle, but it was a demon speaking through her. And so what happens is if you're ministering deliverance, I bound the demon and forbid it to use her body. And I, I, said, I, I said, I lose holy angels to, to bring back my friend. And when she, when she came back, you know, when a person checks out, the demon checks in. So I bound the demon, and then she came back, and I said, ask the Holy Spirit to show you how Michelle got in you. And this girl had come out of satanic ritual abuse. And she said that that through a ritual they had changed out they had changed out her blood and then they made her have sex with this girl and then in the in the ritual they killed this girl. And so anyway, I led her in repentance to repent of everything they made her do. Broke soul ties and that demon uh, left and I tell you afterwards she said <clears throat> I said my goodness that makes me never want to take blood and she said oh that the Satanists don't need the the money they do it to transfer demons in the blood so you can also have soul ties with whoever whoever uh, blood you have I've had people tell me they never had a anger problem until they had a blood transfusion I know another lady who was never suicidal till she had um, a liver transplant. And after that, she became suicidal, and then she found out the person whose liver she had committed suicide. One night I was switching channels, watching for a ball game, watching um, to find a ball game, and I just happened to stop on a discovery program where they were doing a surgery on a lady's brain, and I don't know what, um, I don't know exactly because I got on, in on the tail end of it. But after she had the bra- they did the surgery on her brain. She got a part of somebody's body, and afterwards she became to love. She began to to love a rap music. She began to um, like rap dancing, which she never did before, and uh, and she would have this sensation that something was exploding in her face. And so she began to be curious why there's all this change in her. So she went to find, went to, um, um, she began to search out whose body part she got. And she traced it to an 18 year old African American boy who was into rap music, rap dancing, and he committed, he killed himself by shooting himself in the face. Um, In 2005, somebody gave me a People's Magazine where it said, Can a New Heart Change Your Life? And in that article, um, a man who had had a heart transplant from a 14-year-old, he began to ride his bike for miles and miles. He began to like candy. His wife said he would would stock up on candy when they'd go to the grocery store. And she said, the next thing I know, he might be jumping out of a plane, but he'd gotten the heart of a 14-year-old boy, and he was like in his 70s. Uh, whenever you get someone's body parts, you also get their DNA. And that's the same with blood. 
also through role through role playing. You know, that's pretending. You know, a lot of movie stars died tragically and in situations <clears throat> and many, you know, die in the situations that they had portrayed in the movies. Um So through movies, you know, we're 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 the vineyard of the Lord, so you can plant whatever you're planting, the seeds you're planting, words are words are seed. And so if you're planting demonic seed in your spiritual uh vineyard, it's gonna produce demonic plants. If you look at lustful things, it's gonna produce a spirit of lust because you're watching things that, that cause uh lust seeds of lust to be planted. I used to have a terrible time getting into strife because I used to love to watch Clint Eastwood movies and Charles Bronson's movies with my with my husband, and I was planting in my spiritual garden seeds of strife. And I since I don't do that anymore, then I'm not a person that can get into strife anymore. And so the Bible says, "We're the vineyard of the Lord of Hosts." In Proverbs 24. It says, I passed by a man lacking sense, um, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands for the rest. And he says his poverty comes like a robber and his want like an armed, like a, a armed man because he doesn't watch over. The scripture tells us that we're to watch over our heart. We're to sow with a view to righteousness. We're to, we're to watch what's planted in our heart because it's going to produce and there'll be soul ties with characters we've seen in the movies or things that we've planted, uh, giving blood and taking blood. Role playing. The Bible tells us don't to not sow two kinds of seeds in our vineyard because the bad seed can corrupt the good. It says that in Leviticus nineteen nineteen and Deuteronomy 21, Uh, the Bible says that we're to to not give blood or receive blood. So what I want to do for those that are listening in, I want to give you a minute to just, uh, I'm sure the Lord has already shown you people you've had soul ties with, but I want to pray a general prayer and then we'll open up the lines if somebody wants to call in for special prayer we'll be happy to pray for you so um just pray with me and just repenting of these things lord in jesus name forgive me for um compromising with the word of god i ask you lord in the name of jesus to forgive me for evil soul ties god in jesus name would you forgive me lord for knitting myself together in the bonds of an ungodly relationship. Father, would you forgive me for not operating in the law of love? Father, in Jesus' name, these soul ties are affecting me in a negative way. In Jesus' name, Lord, I ask you to forgive me for sexual sin. I forgive any person who's molested me or abused me sexually, physically, mentally, emotionally. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for fornication. Lord, I ask you to forgive me. I forgive every person who has emotionally abused me, physically abused me, spiritually abused me. I forgive my mother and father if I had to be the mama, the daddy, and I had to be the caretaker of the family. I forgive every person that you've shown me who's ever uh, abused me or who I've abused. Forgive me for homosexuality, Lord, and for uh ungodly relationships i forgive anyone that that has committed incest uh incested me family members who have sexually abused me um i forgive anyone who's raped me lord forgive me if i've committed incest with anyone knowingly or willingly or unwillingly uh i forgive anyone that's raped me lord if i've ever raped anyone i ask you to forgive me Forgive me for bestiality, allowing animals to touch me in an inappropriate way. Forgive me for looking at pornography. Forgive me for lust, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Forgive me for committing adultery. Forgive me for perverted family ties. Forgive me for controlling my children uh, after they're grown. Forgive me for not controlling them when they were growing up. 
Lord, for, uh, I forgive anyone who's controlled me. Forgive me for controlling anyone. Lord, forgive me for touching the dead, the bones of the dead, the graves of the dead. <clears throat> Lord, I just uh, ask you to cleanse me from all defilement of being in hospital beds where people have died. Lord, I want to come out and be separate. Uh, Lord, forgive me for touching what's unclean. Lord, I forgive. Uh, Lord, forgive me for letting the sun go down on my anger and forgive me for the sorrow that leads to uh, death and not the sorrow that leads to repentance. Father, forgive me for vowing I'll never let certain people go. I'll let them go. If you're in grief, uh, you, you're not to talk to the dead, but you can ask God to tell your dead relatives to please forgive you. You can ask God to tell them, and it's tremendous healing that comes when you do that. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, forgive me for making vows. I'll never be like my mother and father. I'll never be like any other person. Or forgive me for vows that I will be like someone. Lord, I want to be like you. Forgive me for inordinate affection for animals. Forgive me for sitting under teachers that are not holy and righteous and not teaching me the word of God and to repent of my sin. Forgive me for laying hands on anyone too quickly. Forgive me for letting other people lay hands on me whose hands have not been holy hands. Forgive me for joining myself with a harlot. Forgive me, Lord, for um, uh, for immorality, sexual immorality. Forgive me for sinning against my body. God, forgive me that I haven't glorified you in my body. Forgive me for not joining my. Forgive me for joining myself to unbelievers, making idols out of my friends, my children, my mates, my boyfriend, girlfriends. Lord, I've become like my idols. Forgive me for evil companions, not walking with with wise men. Forgive me for being a companion of a fool, <clears throat> making pledges and compromising. Lord, forgive me for wounding other people's conscience, and I forgive those who've wounded my conscience and have imprinted me. Forgive me for imprinting others in an ungodly way. Forgive me for associating with compromisers. God, forgive me in the name of Jesus for idolatry. Lord, would you please forgive me for associating with uh, ungodly people? Lord, forgive me for making, uh, for swearing by their gods, bowing down to their gods, mentioning the names of their gods. Lord, forgive me for going back to the re- to, into the world. Lord, forgive me for intermarrying and associating with ungodly people. Lord, I ask you to forgive me uh, in Jesus' name for uh, associating with uh, people that are idolaters and allowing them to turn my heart away for, to their gods. Uh, God, for, I, 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 forgive me for holding fast to ungodly relationships. Lord, I let them go in Jesus' name. Forgive me for being double-minded associating with those given to change. Forgive me for um, eating meals with ungodly people that are uh, sexually immoral, idolaters, covetous, revilers, drunkards, and swindlers. Lord, forgive me for being a a sexually immoral person, for being covetous, being an idolater and a reviler. Forgive me for being a spiritual drunkard, a physical drunkard, uh, a swindler. Forgive me for associating with the gossip in the name of Jesus, going about as a talebearer. God, I ask you, forgive me for controlling others and, and allowing other people to control me. Lord, forgive me for going to the world for answers. Forgive me for having soul ties with doctors, with uh, illegal or legal drugs, uh, with patients. Uh, God, in the name of Jesus, I if you're in the medical profession, Lord, forgive me for laying hands on anyone too suddenly uh and and i want to say this too if you if you're in the medical profession you know um you need to just like a mechanic has to clean the grease off his hands when he gets home and put it put this stuff on his hands to take the grease off you should break soul ties with your patients uh every day or with your doctor okay also lord forgive me for body piercing and for tattooing my body Lord, I forgive anyone who's put me through a satanic ritual. Forgive me for witchcraft, Satanism, voodoo. Forgive me for letting the sun go down on my anger. Forgive me for role-playing and pretending. 
God, forgive me for uh, not watching over my heart, not sowing with a view to righteousness. Forgive me for allowing uh, evil seeds to be planted in my spiritual garden. Lord, from this day forward, I want to sow with a view to righteousness. Lord, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for giving blood, receiving blood, uh, our body parts that belong to someone else, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I just repent, and I repent of everything you've shown me. I break soul ties with each person that I've, I've sinned against or sinned with or any person I've violated the word of God in my relationship with them. In Jesus' name, I sever every cord of control linking their souls to mine. I call back my soul and spirit from them, cleansed, sanctified, and made whole by the blood of Jesus, and I send back their souls and spirits to them, exchange their image for the image of Christ in Jesus' name. Now, you don't have to pray that way. You can say it this way. I send back anything that of theirs that got on me, and I call back everything of mine that got on them. And uh, that basically was taken from, um, you know, it talks about that, that the children of Israel exchanged their glory for an ox that eats grass, and they exchanged his image for the image of an ox that eats grass. And so I, I, I just pray that because I want to exchange the image that I receive for the image of Christ. In the name of Jesus, I just break your power. I break soul ties. I command every demonic spirit that came in through every uh, soul tie that's been broken. I break the power of fear, doubt, unbelief, worry, anxiety, tension, stress, nervousness, perversion, adultery, fornication, witchcraft. I command in the name of Jesus all spirits of grief and sadness. I break the power of harlotry. I break the power of idolatry. I break the power of the demons of vow, the demons that came in through medical, through prescription drugs, through illegal drugs. I break the power of double-mindedness. I command you to go now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I break the power of compromise. I break the power of evil associations. I break the power of wounding somebody's conscience. I command you to go. Lord, cleanse their conscience from all the fathers by the blood of Jesus. I command the spirits of compromise to go in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit of envy, um, double-mindedness. I break your power to leave now. You leave now in the name of Jesus. I command the image of every person that they had a soul tie with, leave. I command all pain to leave their body. I break the power of bestiality. I command all spirits of fornication, pornography to go. I break every word of death, word of death, word of iniquity, curse, assignment, satanic ritual spoken over the pornography in the name of Jesus. I break all hooks that would reel them back to pornography. I break the power of inordinate and affection to animals. You go now. All spirits that came in through sitting under ungodly teachers, I break your power. I break the power of vows. Uh, in Jesus' name, I command the spirit of grief to go. In the name of Jesus, I break soul ties with the dead. I command you to go in the name of Jesus. I break your power. I bind the strong man over every person. In Jesus' name, I spoil your goods. I command all defilement, all unclean spirits to go. In Jesus' name, I break your power, all seditions to go, all lasciviousness, drunkenness, carousing, a party spirit. You have to go, envying, jealousy, I break your power. In the name of Jesus, addictions, I break the yokes of bondage. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of every yoke on their neck that's not the yoke of Jesus. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus, all unbelief, doubt, lies, lying, and a Christ spirit. I break your power in Jesus' name. I command you to go. In Jesus' name, praise you, mighty God. I bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done. We ask you to touch and heal every life. We ask you to heal. Said we can heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, and we do that now, Lord. We ask that every person that's sick who's listening in will be healed. Father, in the name, power, blood, and by the authority of Jesus' name, We thank you, Lord, for what you've done tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you for Dorothy and for Deborah. Lord, I ask you in Jesus' name to bless them, bless this program, bless every person that's listening in in Jesus' name. Lord, I gather each of these people from every place where they've been scattered in Jesus' name. Praise you, mighty God. Bless you, Lord. Now pray with me. Lord, fill me with love, joy, peace, long-suffering gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control in Jesus' name. Thank you for being on the program. You can reach me at uh, jerrymcgee.com or uh, jerrymcgee at sbcglobal.net. 
and you can call me at 903-882-1965. Bless you. If you are interested in listening to free CDs, you can go on my website, jerrymcgee.com. There's free CDs to listen to with deliverance prayers. There's hundreds of uh, CDs you can order. Um, there's articles, free articles you can you can um, uh, read. Um, there's um, and also um, uh, if you're if you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area, I teach a, a deliverance seminar once a month in Duncanville, Texas. If you will email me at Jerry McGee at sbcglobal.net, or you can just go into jerrymcgee.com and you can sign up for email. I'll send you flyers and give you directions of wherever we we are. Um, also going to be at the Spiritual Warfare Conference in Beaumont, Texas, um, March the 17th through the 21st, and be in Hot Springs, Arkansas at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp. Um, and if you are interested in going to that meeting, you can get deliverance prayers every morning, and that's lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com. You can get details there. And so... Uh, Anyway, um, it's a blessing. If you want prayer, if you want to call in, we'll be happy to pray for whoever calls in. Deborah, are you there? <clears throat> I'm here. I'm here. Thank you for a wonderful teaching. Um, I'll give the phone number again if anyone wants to call. It would be 646-595-4784. And when you get connected, if you want to speak to us to have live prayer, just press one, and that'll raise up your hand, and Dorothy will get you in the green room and screen your call, and you can ask us for prayer, whatever particular situation you're in. So uh, we'll give a few minutes if anybody wants to call in and get live prayer. Otherwise, Jerry already told you how to get in touch with her and, and other places that she'll be at, and certainly you can always email us here. Um, but in, in the meantime, Jerry... I just had a couple of things to touch on you, that you mentioned. Um, you know, you talked about soul ties with doctors and stuff, and I thought about phlebotomists. Those are the people that draw the blood. Their whole do- job yeah. is to come and draw blood, and you may not mm-hmm. <clears throat> excuse me. You may not even know who they are because usually you're sent to the lab, and they just come and draw your blood and go. And they, and it's mm-hmm. someone who might be working in phlebotomy. They're drawing blood all day long on all these people, and uh, that's it. Another niche we don't often think about. I remember a girl that had come out of Satanism. She worked for a group of doctors in the Dallas area, and one of her jobs was to get the blood where they could work curses against a person's blood, and she dropped the vial um, and broke it and then put her own blood in there, and they knew that it was her blood, and they beat her terribly for that. Oh, um, yeah, you can get soul ties. If you're, if you're into phlebotomy, you need to break salt. Even carrying urine in your pocket or little vials of urine and, you know, body fluids, you need to break soul ties because that's unclean. It's defilement. So lab technicians or, or nurses mm-hmm. in some cases, but these days mm-hmm. I think it's more lab technicians um, mm-hmm. that would do that sort of thing. Well, and two people go to a lab and pick up the blood. This particular person would pick up the blood and pick up the urine and stuff mm-hmm. and carry it. So, and it I think that, so I'm glad you brought that, that up because that yeah, 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 so much. Yeah. So, so anyway, I guess that would also apply to people working at a nursing home or such that might be cleaning oh, up things. And working with that, um, yeah. But see, the Bible forbids giving, you know, forbids you giving blood, taking blood, you know, even taking blood transfusions. You're getting the DNA of whoever's blood you've got, or working with body and things. You just need to break soul ties and ask God to cleanse you. I mean, we've got to work, so that's not condemning your job, but you need to be wise enough to break soul ties with your patients every day. Mm-hmm. Now, if someone has to have a blood transfusion, they can pray over the blood before it gets transfused in. I don't think so. <laughs> no? Okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm putting that out there. Yeah. I don't want to be I'm getting... I'm putting it on a chest. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know there are some that, that refuse all types of blood transfusion, but sometimes there's a situation where a person 
is getting that or a family member and it's not your choice, but I would think you can reach out to the Lord in prayer ahead of time Mm -hmm. if that's, you know, maybe a a loved one. And, you know, anything we've shared that, anything we've shared that you think is kind of weird, just put it on the shelf, but we're just telling you things that God has shown us that to set how to set people free and how to get free mm-hmm. yourself. It's something that I do every day just about is break soul ties. I'll remember something I did that I've long forgotten. You know, we've got stuff that's been stored in our hearts for through the generations. We're born with stuff. We've got stuff uh, things that happened to us we've let the sun go down on, sins that we've committed that we've not repented of and it's all stored down in our heart. And, of course, God doesn't show us everything at once. We couldn't take it. But he uses the mm-hmm. problem to show us what he wants to pull up next. So there's a spiritual root to everything that we go through. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, and I know you, you mentioned people who've had organ transplants. And I recall a story of a, a middle-aged woman who needed a heart transplant. And she got her heart transplant, and all of a sudden she had this affection for motorcycles and she wanted to go and learn how to ride motorcycle and she started eating fast food like tacos and burritos or something like that, that food she never mm-hmm. ate before, going to fast food places wanting to ride motorcycles and and it turned out that her heart was from a young man who died in a motorcycle crash who liked to eat those mm-hmm. food. So I've, I've heard of that before. I know in the medical world they call that cell memory cell memory but um yeah, yeah but it's the dna of whoever person who's ever you know it's like in the i don't you being a doctor you know about dna i don't know very much about it i just know that you can get a person's dna through their body parts and through their blood you know one of the things they're talking about these days with genetics is something called epigenetics of uh, markers on top of the DNA surrounding it, et cetera. And those, that might be related to the spiritual somehow. Um, I don't know that well, anybody has that exact answer, but that would be related and it. It could help explain mm-hmm. that there's actually a spiritual basis to this. It's not a, you know, a physical basis. It's actually a spiritual basis that is connected with all of that. So mm-hmm. I thought that was very interesting that you brought it up. And one more thing since, since we're we're waiting a bit, just in case anyone's wanting wanting to call in for prayer, um, you talked about soul ties with the dead, and I thought about what about a person who may have familiar spirits in the family, and say, you know, grandma comes to visit me every now and then, and maybe they never knew their grandmother, or maybe they were close before she died, but but now if you know grandma visits them, and they're enjoying these visits with this. Um, entity that they think is their grandmother, can that develop into a soul tie with the dead? Just because now oh, they've sure. been making it that way. And well, that there are a dead, lot of people that get visits from dead relatives or, or right. spouses, I guess, Especially right? Too, if they, the ashes of the dead, you know, you can when you touch the dead, you've got a soul tie with them. And even, even ashes, I know people that keep the ashes of the dead <clears> in their house. And they'll have uh, a familiar spirit of, of, they think it's a forefather visiting to them at night or coming to have sex with them. And it's really a demon that impersonates the dead. Mm -hmm. And you hear that often when a spouse has died. A woman will say that her husband came to visit her. When a spouse, someone's spouse has died and the woman will say, well, my, my husband came to visit me last night. Yeah, that's true. And it's really a spirit that impersonates the husband. Well, it's worth mentioning when right. somebody dies, those those spirits want to go somewhere because they yeah, no longer have their house. When that person dies, they, they have to leave, and they don't want to be without what they call their house. So they, they're looking for somewhere to go. And if you're in that vicinity and you have open doorways, you might be that, that person. Absolutely. You know, I shared this about the blood, about... Uh, um, Years ago in a seminar, in a seminar <clears throat> there was a, a man that said this was a true story, that it was a, 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 woman, a woman had had a blood transfusion from this person, and later on the person whose blood she got was murdered, 
and the girl who got her blood identified the murderer exactly. Mm. And that was a true story, and I don't know where it, where it appeared in some article that the man had read, but he shared that at a seminar when I taught on soul ties. So there's a lot of weird things out there that we don't really understand, and that's why we need to really obey the Word of God. And if we don't know the Word of God, we're going to be taken in by a lot of a lot of things that will destroy us. That's true. God has a purpose for everything that he instructs us in. And we may not always understand what that is, but we need to trust him and follow it because that's there is a good reason. And we don't always Absolutely. understand all of these spiritual things. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's been great being on the program since nobody's mm-hmm. called. I want to give you my email address again, yep. <clears throat> and I'm going to say it, and then I'm going to spell it out. It's Jerry McGee at sbcglobal.net, and that's G like George, E like Edward, R like Robert, I like Ivy, M like Mary, C like Cat, G like George, H like Henry, E like Edward, E like Edward again at sbcglobal.net and you can go on my website at jerrymcgee.com and you can sign up for my little daily email things or my notices I send out so God bless you all and God bless you Deborah. Mm -hmm. sure love you and appreciate you and Lord I pray for each person out there that's listening may their life be touched and never be the same again in Jesus name amen amen well, thank you, Jerry. Amen. It was great to have you, and I guess we'll see you back in two weeks. Okay, great. Thank you so mm-hmm. much. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.